pray. Hello, Metairie Baptists. I wanted you to know that I've been thinking about you and that I have been praying for you. I've been praying for your safety and for the safety of your family and friends without any question, but I've also been praying during this time that in a world with so much chaos and stuff that's taken place and news that just seems uh, detrimental in so many ways, I've been praying that through this all, you would keep your eyes on Jesus. The story of Jesus walking on the water keeps coming to mind in Matthew chapter 14. Uh, he's telling about how uh, Jesus had been there with his disciples. He had fed the 5,000, and then he dismissed his disciples. Listen to how Matthew records it. Matthew says this, Immediately, Jesus made the disciples to get into the boat and to go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after dismissing the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And well into the night, he was there alone. And meanwhile, the boat was already some distance from the land, battered by the waves because the wind was against them. Even in the opening words, it's a reminder to us, first of all, that the disciples were actually doing what God had called them to do, and they found themselves in the midst of distress and in the midst of a storm. They weren't in the storm because they had done something wrong or because they were living poorly. They were in the storm despite the fact they were doing exactly what God had called them. And the other thing I would want you to note in this passage as we move through it is that Jesus, even though he's on the mountain praying, he's able to see them in the midst of the storm and in the midst of the struggle. Every time I look at this passage, I'm reminded that we're going to see the miracle of Jesus stilling the storm and Peter walking on the water. But to me, one of the first miracles that's found in this passage is the simple truth that Jesus was able to see the disciples in the middle of the storm and he cared about them so that he acted. You know the rest of the story. Jesus then comes walking toward the disciples. The disciples, um, they're just typical fishermen. And in the midst of seeing Jesus quite unexpectedly coming toward them, they cry out and begin to say, it's a ghost, not recognizing Jesus at first. And Jesus, full of compassion, understanding their fears and understanding all that was taking place within them, Jesus looked at them and Jesus just said, take courage. I am. It is I. Don't be afraid. In the midst of great storms, Jesus comes to us to comfort our hearts. He comes to help us find courage to live for the next day and for the next moment. Right after that, here's where I want you to listen real carefully. Right after this, Peter then says, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you. Peter wanted to walk on the water, and Jesus said, come. You know the rest of the story. Peter begins to walk on the water toward Jesus. And the scripture says real clearly that Peter then began to look around, and he noticed the waves that were coming against him. And in the midst of noticing the waves, he took his eyes off Jesus, and he began to sink. I remind you, we must absolutely keep our eyes on Jesus during this time. He is the one who provides hope and he provides salvation. There's also a word of comfort though. Occasionally we do take our eyes off of Jesus. Sometimes we have those moments of anxiety. Sometimes we have moments of fear in our lives. But Jesus doesn't write us off. Peter was sinking in the water and Jesus walked over and rescued Peter. And I can assure you that in the midst of walking through difficult times, Jesus is going to be there to help. So my encouragement to you is simply this. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The psalmist, years before Jesus was even born, said it well when he said, I will lift mine eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. So I encourage you, keep your eyes on Jesus. May God bless you.